Hi, my name is Anita Moore and I'm a decorative painter and I'm going to show you my uh, last project that I've done. And this is uh, on a wooden panel. It's called A Cold Day, Little Robin sitting on a um, branch. And uh, I thank my friend Carrie uh, Michon for always allowing me to use her uh, photos for uh, reference and uh, with her permission, of course. Um, so that'll be on my website sometime today. And today I want to do a art journal page. So it's called Flowers Bloom and So Does Hope. And this is done on a um, uh, brown badger uh, book. Okay. And it's uh, an 11 by 14. And I just put my hand in a bunch of paint here. Okay, and this um, uh, art journal page. So I've I've done um, I've kind of redid this old pattern using this flower um, on an art journal page. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, little technique that I have here going on. Um, it's using some uh, deco art wallpaper, some uh, stamps. And uh, so let's get started. I'm going to turn my camera around. OK, so you can see it a little closer. This is all going to be decor products. I'm going to be using some um, uh, Dynasty brushes. OK, and I have paint still all over my hand. Okay, one sec. I don't know how I did that. Okay, I went ahead and uh, because sometimes gesso so takes a little while to dry, I, I went ahead and I used the premium white gesso. So what I did was I took this uh, Palmer uh, filbert brush and I slip slap uh, some gesso and leaving some little areas with paper. So this gives you like a nice background texture. And then once it was dry, what I did was I applied um, heavy gel medium gloss from Americana as well. So now this is dry. The colors that I use for my background is uh, Green Lagoon, Till Green, and uh, Sweet Mint. And I use the Till Green more towards like the edges, okay? And I'm just gonna put my apron on for this because sometimes get a little messy okay now to do my background I use like a sip slot method and um, with uh, a novel brush so this is a three three eighths inch you can also use a one and I'm gonna wet my brush okay now I'm gonna pick up um, the Green Lagoon first. So I have my three colors on um, my palette and I'm gonna pick up the Green Lagoon. And so it just slips up. I have maybe too much water now, that's okay. And then I'm gonna pick up the other color, just mix this up, just go in circle or like an X motion, I should say. So this is what you call slip slap color and just keep repeating it between the two light colors. And if sometimes if you don't add too much pressure, you're not gonna see these little axes. Um, and then I'm gonna just go on the edge with the darker color. So you're kind of working wet on wet, okay? And I'm gonna need some more of this green. Okay, just keep keep working it there when I'm wet. So I do a little section at a time. Okay, then I picked up, and now I always keep my uh, brush dirty when I pick up a new color. Okay, a lighter color. You can go along the edge as well. Okay, you just keep working it. And then pick up a little darker over here. 
Again, I'm going to start using a little bit of uh, light pressure here, not so heavy on, on my wrist. Okay, let's go on to the bottom part. I'm going to move this up just so you can see a little bit better. And when it dries, it'll be a little different. Again, I'm just going to keep going back and forth. Some light color. And I'm going to have to add some more on my palette of the light color. Now, also, um, I normally use extender uh, to this. This will allow longer play time. So what I would do is add it to my bristles. If you find that the paint's just dragging, not blending all that well. Put in some light color here. My flower will be here. Let's add some dark color. Because now I can tell my my colors, my my bristles are getting dry. My colors aren't blending all that well. Darker here. There, there, it's getting there. Okay, I'm just gonna. There, I think this is fine. I like it. Okay, so it's okay if uh, you see a little bit of white in the background, that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna just wet my brush because we're done with that and we're gonna dry this up. Now this really has to be dry for the next step, uh, which is like a rouging. I call it rouging with um, uh, some asphaltum. We're done with these colors. Okay, and what I did, um, I, so I took some sandpaper uh, once it was completely dry and I wrapped it up a little bit so the white came back through. It just adds a little bit more uh, texture to the paper. See how there, you can see the white came out? So um, you can use, um, I have these ones. Um, so this is 180 grid, you can use that. And this is 100. So we'll go with the 180. Okay, so just lightly sand. See how the leaves a little bit of a texture in the background? Can you go all the way to the edge there? I'm not worried so much where the flower is gonna be. If you don't want to do this step, you don't really have to. There. Okay, so let's take a tacky cloth here and then this will just remove any dust. See, it removes all the standing. Okay, so my next step is um, some asphaltum and baby white. So let's put a little bit of asphalt on here. Let me just move my palette here. Okay, and a little piece of baby white. Okay, now I'm gonna move, put this like in a little uh, bundle. 
okay? And I'm just gonna lightly pick up some asphaltum and just, I don't want it like a blob, so pick up a little bit at a time. And I'm gonna start along the edge and then just rub it in. So it makes it age looking. So you have to pick up when you notice it doesn't go anywhere, just pick it a little bit more up. And I don't want like a harsh line. So you kind of want to slowly fade it out, okay, when you get to the center area. So see how my paper wasn't really dry? It took a little bit of my, my um, paint off. So what I could have did was put some gel uh, blending over top of this. That's okay. So just like slowly fade it out into the center area. Okay, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more. Be gentle with uh, the edges here for your little ring. You don't break them. Okay, let's, and then if I wanna clean it up a little bit, just, yeah, make this a little darker. Um, I'll go a little bit more to the corners here. Okay, and then if I want to make it just a little bit darker, just along the corners and edges. So what I'm going to do is just um put some on, but like you can just dab, just to make it a little darker. Have some colors. And fade it out. Here and there. Bring this around. Okay. And a little bit more here. Where my flower is going to go. Okay. I'm happy with that. I think that looks nice. Okay, I'm done with that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to wipe a little bit off my table here. I'm going to dry this up. Okay. Let's dry this off so we can transfer our uh, flour. Okay, as long as this part's dry, I just need to transfer my flower for now. Okay. I have the paper. Along the edge. Okay, and see, I have it like along the, just along the edge, and I went over it with paint just to try and Break it up. So what I did, um, I have my tracing paper here somewhere. Right here. And uh, you can use a pen to trace it or your stylus. So I have it placed. Oops, I moved it. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Put my paper. 
Okay. I'm going to start with my circle. And I always check to make sure that it's good to go before I uh, start transferring my design. I need to add a lot of pressure. Oops. I don't know if this had a wiggle in it. I used this paper a couple times now already. And did I start off this one? There we go, we did. Okay. There. Okay. Let's see my lines. Okay, now. The flower is white, and because the background has like so many colors, what I did was I um, it's gonna take a couple of coats to do this um, um, like this petal. Um, so what I did was I took my snow white. Um, I took the white gesso and um. I don't know why I did my uh, Snow White. So I have cool white. That's okay. Okay. So I what I do is I take, um, it just helps a base coat when you do this. I'm going to put some gesso. I might have to do this a couple of times. And then just take a palette knife. And mix your two together, just mix it nice and thick. So I'm I'm gonna have to do this a couple of times. And when I apply the, um, the paint, I use a um I like using filberts when it's a round um design because it's easy to um I go around the circles because it's nice and oval. So this is a number eight filbert. You can definitely use a bigger uh, size. Okay, so fully load your uh, brush. And then just, so I go with the shape of the petal. So again, this is gonna take a couple coats. I'll do the first coat and then I'll just stop it and give it a couple more coats after. And if it's too dry, just wet your brush a little bit. And I try, I, it's okay if you go into the center too in your base coating. Um, that's okay. Oops, I'm gonna leave my and unpainted there. Oops. And you might see the graphite line too, depending on how dark you went. Well, that's okay because it'll guide you uh, with the, the petals and also 
it'll be uh, traced out with a pen, so that's okay. So I always go like in a straight line. I try not to uh, go in different directions when you're uh, painting base coating. And I don't do big blobs of paint when you're doing this because then you're gonna get these lines on your base coating. So like here, there's a big line. You want it like an even distribution of paint when you're base coating. Again, my paint is a little dry. Now, if you like art journaling, I have other um, designs on my uh, YouTube page, some videos, and if you want to follow along. This is actually the first time that I do a really big one. I usually do little ones. The little art journaling page. Yeah, and these are, this of course is a daisy, so, you know, the petal lines do not have to be perfect. Now I'm I'm going to just so I don't bore you with the base coating. I'm gonna stop my video. I'm gonna go ahead and finish base coating and then um what I'll do is I'll pop back on, okay? Okay, I put two coats on here. I think that's okay. Um, I dried it, and now the next step is to add some coats uh, by the petals. And I used a uh, winter blue, and then we darkened that. Um, I'm just gonna put this over here. We're gonna put winter blue on the palette. And uh, I used a, um, a half, half inch uh, angle brush. So I'm gonna wet my brush. Okay, and I'm gonna use some extender because I find it's dry down here and my paint is like drying too fast. So I'm just gonna put some in my little metal container. I'm gonna dip my brush in here. And then I'm going to pick up um, the winter blue and just blend it. Okay. Now I'm going to 
put some at the bottom here on each uh, petal and it can be choppy. And sometimes I use a mop brush and like you can soften it a little bit and just keep wiping it on the paper towel. Again, just chop your little boots down at the edge here. This helps separate the petals. And then we'll go along the edges after. So again, it's a messy boat. Okay, I'm gonna just put my brush and pick up some more winter blue. This one was a little dark. Always make sure you don't put your hand on the wet paint when you're you're going in circles like I am right now. Okay, now we're going to dry that and we're going to go along the edges. Okay, and I'm going to just put a little bit more extender on my brush. Okay, now we're going to start uh, separating our petals. Um, I'm going to start um, like over here because it seems a little bit more drier. So again, we, we're going to use the winter blue. And so I'm going to start from the top and go all the way to the bottom here. You can, again, just use a mop brush if you want to just to soften it up. Okay, now this one here overlaps. So we'll come back to that one. So you kind of have to skip because you can't uh, float over top a wet one because you're just gonna make a mess. So we're gonna skip a couple here. Just pull it here. Just keep softening it. Now, if you wanna, like, you know, it's not gonna be a clean edge, uh, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna um, ink afterwards. Okay, I'm just gonna clean my brush out. I find it's, I'm gonna put some extender again. I'm just dipping this in and okay. And then we're gonna go over here. Okay, let's go back uh, on top here. We're going to just, oops, that's a little dark there. Soften that up. Okay, we'll go down here where we started. Right to the bottom. Okay. And then I'm just looking at my picture here. We go over here. 
So you're kind of going to where it's um, behind um, like another petal, right? So it's a, oh, like shadowed area. And again, I'm going to take my brush off and just reload my paint. And I'm going to start over here. Right here. And over right here. And I believe there's one here as well. All righty, let's dry that off. And we're going to darken some of it, not all of it. We're going to darken some with some Payne's Gray, and then we're going to in some areas there. Sure, it's all dry. So I'm going to use the same angle brush to do my my floats again. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some extender, and then I'm going to pick up some Payne's gray, and it is a darker color. So really blend your your uh, brush, and just do not all of um not every single one of them but just a few you can go up a little bit and not all the way and be here skip a few. Okay, uh, let's do this one. So over here. Do over here. I don't remember which ones I used really or which ones I did, so, so how you want to see it. Okay, that one's a little dark, very dark. I'm just going to wet my brush here, just tone some down a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to do a couple little ends here at the bottom part. There, I think that's okay. No. Maybe move up in a darker little section right here. Alrighty. Okay. We're going to dry that off and we're going to do a few little areas with the avocado. So I have like a few sections here. It has a little bit of avocado in it.
Ready? Okay, we'll put this on. You don't need a whole lot of this. I can get some out. Okay, same angle brush. Okay, uh, we're going to put some here because we didn't have any blue here. Just to give it a little bit of a color. Just tap it. And what we can do here. Wait, my brush. Um, we can do this one already has blue, so let's just do the end over here. And then we can do just the ends. I think that's good. It was just to do a few little areas. I might do a little bit of green here too. Okay. We're going to dry the saw. Okay, I did some, uh, I added some stencil uh, on my petals and that's done with um, the Tim Holtz Flourish um, pattern. And I use a paper towel, you're gonna need a paper towel. You're gonna need a Dynasty, uh, I use a quarter inch uh, stencil brush, it's Stencil Pro, and I use Winter Blue. Okay, now I do one, one petal at a time so that you can place it. And uh, so what I do is I load my bristles, okay? And then you're gonna wipe off as much paint as you can onto the paper towel. And again, we're just gonna start with uh, one petal here. And it doesn't have to be all over, like just in different little areas. You can just rub this in. Okay, and then we'll pick up some more. So you have to wipe it every time you load your bristles. Just go in circles. You can go all the way down to the end too, not just the top area. Paint your um, 
directions when you're um, uh, you're dry brushing. This way, the paint doesn't hold on its edges. You're you're um, you're moving the paint around, and you're not gonna have like those blobs on the on the pattern as well when you're doing that. I don't know why I'm turning my piece around. I can just make this dense off and have it. This one feels like squeezing these two together. You can tell if there's pink going on your on your petals there by how you're applying the paint. And I think that's good. So clean these uh, with soap and water. You gotta be really careful because these are really dainty little edges. So you, you can clean with soap and water. I'm gonna just let my brush soak because we're done with that one. Okay, we're gonna do the center part. And um, that is done with, um, what do I use? Deep ochre and some asphaltum. And so it's like stippling. Okay, and I also used a summer squash for the highlight. You don't see it a whole lot. Um, I'm thinking maybe I can mix it a little bit up with white just so that it pops up a little bit more. So I'll have my summer squash base coated with deep ochre. And asphaltum. Okay. And we're going to be using, it's called the Deerfoot brush. I, I really like this because the bristles are soft. Now, if you find this is too big for you, you can also use um, a smaller one. Okay. Uh, this is a quarter and this is a half. So I'm gonna use a half. I'm gonna place it like this because my my shade's gonna be on the one side, my highlight's gonna be on the other side, okay? But first, uh, to load your deer foot, it's on an angle. You're gonna load the, the big tip here. And so you're gonna load it with paint and then you're gonna pounce it so that the paint goes into your bristles. So you're gonna need, um, a uh, couple coats before we can add your dark and your light colors. And you want it to stipple on the, like a little bit further from the circle. That's what gives it that little uh, pounce effect there along the edges. Okay, right, now we're going to turn it around just to do this side. Okay, so that's the first coat. Okay, let's dry that off. I'm going to need some more. Now, when you're applying your, um, like this here, it has to be kind of like wet on wet so that the colors blend together. Okay. Now we're gonna start with the highlights. So I'm gonna hold it like this cause my highlight's gonna go like half, like a half moon. Okay, so I'm gonna load with um, the original color, the base coat colors. I'm going to do this and I want a lot of paint on here. Okay. I'm 
And I'm going to put some at the bottom. Okay, so it's wet on wet. Okay, now I'm leaving my brush dirty and I'm going to pick up the summer um, squash and I'm going to blend these two together. Now I found it was too late, so I'm just going to pick up a tad of white here, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to blend those colors together. See how you have the two colors together? Okay, now I'm going to start along the edge. Here's my highlight. And then I'm going to go into the center here. So I'm going to try and create um, my moon. OK. So I just want to make it a little bit more rounder here. OK. Now, I just want to just wipe off this, OK? So I'm going to pick up the original color again. Right. Okay, so I blend it. Now the same thing with the the high up, the big toe. I'm going to pick up the asphaltum, and I'm going to blend those together. See how those two colors blend together? You keep pouncing. Okay. Now I'm going to turn this around. I put my hand on my uh, highlight there. Okay. I'm going to. Always start with the outside before you do the inside. This way it doesn't give you a harsh line. Okay, now I'm going to do the inside. And move it up just a little bit if you want. Now it's your highlight, okay? Now you can join those two together just so it's not so harsh there okay so now that's your center now we're going to leave that dry now i kind of put my hand um on my highlight over here just wiped it okay there we go okay and i believe we're done with the deer foot brush i'm just going to rinse this off Okay, we're going to dry that off there a little bit. Okay, I outlined um, oh, bad paint on my paper somewhere, or it could have been my hand. Um, let me just wipe this off. I'm a messy painter today. Okay, that's good. You messy painter. Okay, we're gonna outline um my uh, the petal first, cause then we'll add the gold leaf on it. So let's just outline, and I used um this one and this one. Okay, so they're uniball pants. This one's black, and this one is a gold gold color. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I did was I kind of outlined it twice around. It's not like a, an even line or a perfect line. And then I went around with the gold. Okay. And this will help separate. I'm going to try not to touch my, um, my center. So just let your hand go loose and it'll just trace out the petals. Okay. Okay. 
Um, I feel like it's my paper is probably not dry. It's, it feels wet a little bit, so the ink is not going on as good as it should. So it's wet in a couple of little areas. I'm going to grab a piece of paper here. Listen to some of the ink. Just keep going around. Okay, that's it for the black. I'm going to use the gold color and that one here I just went once around I didn't go a couple times around make sure you don't drag your hand you're going to smudge the ink so I'm just This one here goes on really nice. And over here, there we go. Okay, I always add the dots last, okay? I don't do it right away. Now, I have here, um, it is called some gold leaf. Uh, this one here is a little messier than um, the foil. I had this for a very long time, and you know what? I've never used it, never, ever. And it's very pretty. So I want to show you how to use this one. And I did put a little bit too on the petals. You can put a little bit on the petals. Okay, I kind of left the space too. <laughs> um, for my writing, uh, here I ended up having to put it on top of it, but you can still see it. Okay, so I kind of leave it a little blank. I could trace it on first. Um, Actually, I could do that just so I know exactly whereabouts my um, flower is going to go. Okay, I'll put this aside there. Okay, All right. and I also want it on top. So it's going to go. Oh, yeah, I had bloom uh, flowers over here. So. I'm going to have it partially on one petal anyways. I'm going to make sure it's straight. Okay. So we're going to transfer this on, and then I'll put flowers over here. Okay. I can use um, a pen to transfer it on. I don't need to really put the bubble on. 
I'll look at it and freehand it. Okay, yep. Okay, and whoop. Now, if you don't want to, um, uh, like, uh, paint these on, like it would uh, a liner, you can always just use a um, your marker to do this. Okay, and flowers. I'm gonna put it kind of in the middle of the bloom right here. I'm gonna check before. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Done with that. Okay. Now let's go back to the four. Okay. Now, like I said, it's really messy, very messy. Okay. First things first is you have this glue. And I don't like using um, good brushes for this. So what I do is, um, oh, they're called like utility brushes. They're really old. You use them to apply glue and um, other little uh, mediums. Okay. And this is very sticky, very, very sticky. Um, I'm just gonna get a paper, a wet one ready there because I make a mess. Okay. okay, I'm gonna dip this in here and I don't want to like a lot. Okay, I just want to um, kind of like drops, right? So just kind of <laughs> blend it in. Okay, so I don't want blobs. Uh, so what I do is I, like, again, I put some on your petal along the edge here. You can add as much as you want or just a little bit, and I think that's good. So it has to dry uh, a little bit for the foil to uh, stick on there. So I'm gonna dry this a little bit there, because on the bottle it says you have to wait like 15 minutes, but I'm gonna speed it up with the, the blow dryer. You should always, always read your instructions on bottles of but anything, varnish, uh, mediums, and it'll tell you the proper usage for everything. It doesn't stink. At least I don't think it stinks.
So you kind of want it like um like sticky for the for it to stick on. Like the bottom part is good because I didn't apply like thick uh, air glue. I don't know if you can see, like I have a blob here that should be dry a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna start from the bottom since it's a little thinner here. Okay. Use the one. Okay. Now, like I said, it's um very I don't know what the word is, like denty. Like I have some. So if you have glue in your fingers, oh my God, have fun trying to take it off. So what you do, it's kind of trying to look for the glue, kind of blend that in there. So I have glue here. So you lay it flat. We're gonna buff it afterwards. So right now I'm just using my fingers just to blend that in there. Just rip off some paper there. I'm trying to see and find where all my glue is. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn this around just so I can see where my glue is. I got some here. Oops. Some here. I don't know if I had some more on my flower. Could put a little bit more, but I'm gonna feel for the glue. I have a little bit here. No, no. Oops. There, I think I got most of it. Okay, I got most of it, so I am going to throw the rest of it out. No point of trying to save that. I'm going to put the rest of this away. Okay, now I'm just going to bring the glue off my fingers. Okay, so now this is like a little buffer, so it'll help. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, it just helps it um, uh, press into the glue a little bit more and removes ex like extra leaf that's loose.
So it's kind of like buffing it. Okay, I think that looks good. So you got different little areas. Okay, now I also added some stamps to this. Okay. And uh, I use the Archival uh, Ranger ink at Jet Black. Let's see, I have gold from the last time I used it. Okay, I used, um, oh, this is Stupendous uh, ink uh, stamps. It's called uh, the Grunge Strap. And um, Tracy Mara uses these a lot. Um, okay, so I use this one and uh, the little round stamp, and I'm going to just put some on. Um, you can add some in the flower, too. It's really pretty. The writing's going to go there, so that's okay. Add it wherever you want. Um, so I can add a little stamp here. Okay. And then clean these um, with um, their stamp cleaners. Okay, so I'll show you how to clean this one. Um, so it's, this is a cleaner for the ink. So you just lay this on. Got, oh, I lost my little um, sponge. There was a sponge on there. So you wait a few minutes. You'll take um, a paper towel and then it'll just wipe it off. It'll remove your ink. It does stain, but it still works. So that's how you clean um, the stamps. It'll last a long time if you take care of them. Okay, now I have my little circle. And then I added a few of these. And add them off the page. I didn't put a whole lot, just a couple. Again, clean it the same way. Okay, we're done with the ink. Goes with this. Okay, now we can put in our writing, and the writing is done with uh, some lamp black. Um, my extender. Okay. We'll start with uh, flowers and uh, where's my brush? Okay, use the brush that you're comfortable with. And so I have uh, the Rigor uh, Pool Squirrel Zero. And I also have um, the Extra Long Detail Micron for the smaller ones. Okay, and I use this one for the big ones. Now I wet my brush with the extender. Oh, that one's kind of long. It might not work. I'm not sure. You can use um, the 10 0 rigor. That might be a little bit better. I might have grabbed the wrong brush. So, really, like, make your um, inky so that, and really add your. Uh, paint to the bristles okay and then just add like a little light pressure and when you want this to be a uh, thicker just uh, add pressure to it so i add pressure and then just release it Oops. I want this a little rounder. Mm 
you just keep adding some extender just to make it a little inkier and make it flow a little bit better. Because I want to make that a little wider so you can go back. Oops, I don't know what I did there. Okay, and then I'll use, I'll, I'll go on to the, the small ones and then I'll do the bigger ones. So again, I just add pressure to the brush when you want it a little thicker. So, so does, and then I'm gonna add pressure here just to make my D a little bit bigger. I still have like glue on my paper. <laughs> Okay, we're done with that one. I'm gonna use the bigger rigger now. Okay, so this is uh, number zero. I'm gonna just put this in my extender just to wet this, make a puddle, fully load your brush, and then just roll it till you get a little point on the, oh, can't even see it. So just roll it till you get a point. Okay, now I think, I know I should dry this so that my hand doesn't go in it. Okay. Pressure. Oops, made a smudge there. My uh, brush got stuck kind of thing. Okay. I need to make this a little bit more watery. Okay. I love my brush often. I don't know why. It's just, I just want it to be full of paint before I go on to the next letter. And when this is really dry, you can erase the graphite lines with like your eraser. And 
push down on your bristles when you you want the uh, thicker lines. I'm just gonna reload my brush on my cleaner. Okay. A little thick. right here and then my exclamation mark. Okay. Now we're gonna dry that off. We're almost done. You can make this thicker if you want to, like I just did it. Um, the H is actually thicker than the other ones, but I like it. Okay, okay. now we're gonna add our dots and I use, um, let me see what colors I use. Avocado, there's black and white. You can also use Payne's Gray. So I have Payne's Gray on my palette and I use the stylus for that. Um, the stylus sometimes has um, different shapes. This one here is a little, you can have the one with the bigger little tip there. Okay, so I need white, green, some more green on my, for some reason my paint does not want to come out. I need a new bottle. Okay, I got green. So we can start with um, Payne's Gray. Okay, brush blob here. Okay, and then just add in twos. You can put threes all the way around. There'll be different sizes too, because you, you keep dabbing till you got no more paint. So you always start off with the, and it's okay if you go on the petals with the dots. Okay, I'm gonna do green. Okay, and then I'm gonna use white. And I think I'm gonna put a fresh puddle of white. Just randomly put them on. My green got really 
click there. In there. So I think that's good. I need a couple dark ones over here. There. I'll keep that dry. There you go. I think we're done. So again, here's the original. And then this one's darker. Um, like again, my paint came off uh, when I did use the baby wipe, but um, always let like your paint dry really, really well before you move on to the next step. But I think it still looks good. It looks more distressed than this one, but I like them both. So that completes my little um, video. Um, I hope you will um, enjoy this um, pattern and uh, please like, follow, and uh, you know, um, hit the little notification so that you can uh, know when my little videos come on. So thank you for watching.